Robbie Madison and Jeremy Twitch Stenberg. We're looking at the jump. He didn't do that many runs at it. He only took two, like or, two three, or three yeah. runs and then he just hucked it. I was like, damn. The confidence he has when he's talking about a jump. He's like, oh yeah, I'll just take the degree out. I'm going to click third gear wide coming out of the tunnel. I'm going to land right at the perfect spot. My wife's always yelling at me. You don't have to beat him at this too. I'm like, yes, I do. But he's more of an asshole. Yeah, totally. I'm he's like more the of a nice pussy asshole. too. <laughs> See what I mean? It's already uh, getting to a good start. Yeah, we're, we're in. I'm at a gypsy. Now, if you've been following the podcast recently, you would know that we're on a massive health kick. Uh, as we get ready to take on World Vets at Glen Helen in November of 2023. Athletic Greens is not only an all-in-one formula that helps me just cover all my nutritional bases, uh, it's also the first healthy habit that I have uh, that starts every single day. AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that are able to offer gut health support, mood support, can affect your energy each day and contribute to overall healthier looking hair and skin. Three up with you guys would be great. <laughs> with both of us? That would yeah. be a up cast yeah, are, we, one. are we rolling? Yeah. We're good. All right. We are rolling here in a field in Kansas City at the E3 Ranch. I'm joined with uh, two of my friends, Robbie Madison and Jeremy Twitch Stenberg. Yes, uh, they happen to be team captains of uh, this new Red Bull Imagination format. Uh, they've been rivals for a really long time now, so it just makes sense to keep the ball rolling on that. Honestly, but, uh, rivals with every single thing we do. Uh-huh. Everything. Where we're li- you're driving home from from dinner together <laughs> at a restaurant, family. racing. <laughs> <laughs> well, my every- wife's always yelling at me. You don't have to beat him at this, too. I'm like, yes, I do. And then his wife's yelling at him in the other car. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And both our wives' last names are Sanders. There's too much stuff in common. <laughs> it's Dude, crazy. That is a trip. Yeah, we is. both have kids with the same birthday, just same one birthday. year apart. Like, yeah. It's like we're related, but we're not. You're the Aussie Twitch, and he's the American Maddo. That's that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, Something but, like that. but he's more of an asshole. Yeah, totally. He's I'm more like of a, I'm he's like more the of a nice pussy asshole. Too. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> this Full is the sh- get the deal. That's with. why he's got tough stickers. I, <laughs> 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 I like this. It's already uh, getting to a good start. Yeah, we're we're in. So yeah, uh, Rob, go. F- yourself <laughs> so competing against each other Remember your with <laughs> so competing with each other without even getting on a bike probably a first for you guys but can you explain uh, how the format works wait, before like did he say i was the pussy i don't know because i brought a bike oh you know yeah, you did you flip some shit too. yeah you know i just i just had to beat robbie at something i had but, to give you one man by, de- <laughs> by default <laughs> So how does this format work, boys? I'm still kind of confused on how it works. They kind of get it. It's like a team deal. Like we have guys that we send out and girls for like speed and style, big dogs, creative whip. line. Best whip. Best whip. And then, and then like a team overall impression of like everyone riding together. Um, I like it though. It's like, because yeah. like you say, it was kind of confusing at first. It was like, wait, aren't they meant to be competing against each other? But the vibe it's brought is really cool like everyone's brought together like there's not so much everyone worrying about competing against mm. everyone it's more of a team thing so, but everyone's pulled together it's cool because with the course this gnarly this dangerous you don't want everyone to be pushing the absolute limit they can all focus on what their specialities yeah. are which just brings a whole nother level to it it's, it's a good vibe we got going on this weekend it, it's so hard to be really good at everything you do out here this mm. week because there is a lot of jumps and there's a lot of different options a lot of different lines some are tricky so I think it takes a lot of pressure off being part of a team because you're like, hey, I'm not feeling this section and can someone else do this section for me? And all, I feel good over here. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's more of like a, a fun, like when it's, whenever it's a team thing, it's more fun for sure. Yeah. And then like with riding, like I think there's always stages, you know, like some people, you can look at them like they're more comfortable with big dogs, like big jumps, yeah. you know, like McCarty was here before. Julian, Vince, Dippin, obviously Tyler, you know, there's certain people, Hill, they can just go out and just 
you know, smack big ones is no thing. And there's other people that are just used to different facets of They're racing. They're like more and techy yeah. and more like on that kind of flowy yeah. creative side. So it kind of yeah. takes the pressure off certain people because they're like, oh, I can focus on a whip. Sweet. I don't have to go and jump all the big dogs and compete against these gnarly guys in that category. I can just shine the light on what I like, which I really like that part of it because I think it's taking the pressure off a lot of people and allows everyone to kind of focus on their strengths. And it's yeah. been cool to kind of watch people break off into their groups as well. And, you know, like you, I mean, everyone, at, this is the kind of event where everyone is going to help everyone. But this year, it seems like it's, that's kind of taken to a, a whole new level. Like Tyler and Pat yesterday were kind of like running each other into a bunch of different jumps and figuring out timing and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it, it has added a, a super cool dynamic. And it's cool as well to see like the progression of the event itself like we're four years in and it's i think that that speaks to the level at which this is like a by rider four rider type of event you know <clears throat> well it for the past three years all the riders like the funnest shit that they do is riding with the with all of each other throughout yeah, the week through and the week. like like you said you see beerman towing patrick and you see patrick towing me and you see someone you know like everyone's helping each other and, and throughout the week, I feel like that's, like, the funnest part. But it's so hard to capture that and sell to a company, like, hey, this is what should be filmed as mm. this stuff, not yeah. the contest. The contest is kind of, like, it's, like, the serious day. Like, no one's laughing. No one's smiling. No one's, like, happy. Everyone's, like, on edge. I got I to gotta get my thoughts right, and I got to get a rundown. Where more of, like, throughout the week, it's like, yo, come follow me off this. Hey, let's let's transfer this. Let's hit these two lines and see if we can meet up together. And and I feel like with, like, the team and, and the rundown of how the show was this year, it's going to be more like that. So it was definitely cool. Last night they sold some VIP tickets, and the fans got to come out and see part of that, yeah. of, like, what yeah. we get to feel like. When, when I get out to Kansas, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a fun week. Like, the camaraderie between all the riders, just everyone having fun, helping each other, and just doing cool shit and being pumped for each other, not like, fuck he just flipped that now what am now i gonna I do? do you know it, what i mean yeah. it's like fuck yeah that's sick all right i'm gonna try that you know yeah, like yeah. And, and you're not like pissed that someone did it you're like stoked for them so it's it's cool to actually see you're that like part i'm glad he's on my team <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so it's definitely cool to see and 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 i like more of the route that this contest is starting to go towards because like i said the last three years all of us were like we get back to the barn and everyone's like oh my god today was the sickest fucking day ever on a dirt bike like it was so cool watching them two ride together or everyone ride together. So to actually have that as in kind of part of the contest, it's it's definitely cool to see. I really like that. So do you want to break down for people listening uh, who you picked on your team and then we'll go through your team, Robbie, like who you picked and why? I heard there was a little bit of tomfoolery perhaps with the <laughs> coin toss. I don't know how you fuck a coin toss up, but apparently it happened. Maddo and Hog can fuck up a coin toss anytime. <laughs> Maddo, not not really Maddo. Maddo's just like, Thank yeah, you. okay, cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was all Hog. You know what I mean? Like, Hog messed it up. He, what happens? The viewers, you're following. Hog did the coin toss. Jeremy called tails. I called heads. It landed on tails. He looked at me. and goes, "All right, Maddo, you pick first. Jeremy's like, "What the heck?" <laughs> so the, I just said tails. He's like, "No, you didn't. You said heads." <laughs> yeah. He, so he says that, and he's like, "Oh, okay, I'll start again." So then he does another coin toss, lands on heads. He's like, "Maddo, you go first. So and then, I, and as he's, he's like, tossing the coin, win? I'm confused as hell. I'm like, "Didn't I just win the coin toss?" You know what I mean? <laughs> and and the hard thing is too, it's like, there's ten people here. You know what I mean? And each person has an equal. So it's like you can't have all those one. You can't have all the heavy hitters on one team. Yeah. You need to have a heavy hitter on each single team for each single category. And when me and Rob were looking at it, we were like, okay, we got we got Cole and maybe Vicky for creative lines. We have Speed and Style is going to be Evans and Hill. So we can't pick them on the same team. You know yeah. what I mean? And then we all went over all this stuff. And then I almost was like went against everything we said in the meeting <laughs> upstairs before we came down. When there was two more to pick, I saw Beerman was the last guy. And I'm like, well, if I pick them – He's going to get Beerman, and I'm going to get him. And I'm like, I might just fuck this all up right now and just take Beerman and just, like, <laughs> throw this whole thing in a loop. But I was like, I'll stay on course to what we talked about upstairs, and I will get fucked. But <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> he likes getting fucked. <laughs> and then hey, uh, the thing, though, is, like, old Jeremy would have been like, no, fuck this, I'm taking Beerman. <laughs> and yeah. then so, like, he tried to, for once, play the Be role. Be an adult. Be yeah, an adult, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. he totally got screwed. And at the end of it, I was like, <laughs> If this footage airs showing what happened, they're going to think for sure that, like, Hog was, just Hog was like, yeah. trying to rig it for me. <laughs> and I even, like, we shared a room the other night, and I was like, I was wondering if Hog, like, 
if, if he's if he's super smart because I just kind of clicked on me. Maybe he was like on top of this and he meant to do that. And I was like, and I asked him, I was like, do you mean that? He's like, no, it's just, just the way it went out. So it was a total fluke. But yeah, the way it all landed, up. the cards fell in my hand. I had a solid team. I had four of the top guys who were in best whip in at X Games in, on one team. <laughs> and he actually conceded defeat. He's like, walks up to me after he goes, hey, good job, you won. But congratulations, then, Maddo. I don't yeah. want to do this, but congratulations, buddy. <laughs> but now the table's turning, unfortunately, Brian. He's uh, up in the university hospital right now, which is a huge bummer for this whole yeah. event. But, but, but to, as the ball goes on, the, as this show rolls on, he got to choose someone, steal them from my team, because we kind of we We had to even out the happened. teams, because it wasn't... It was too off with me losing a guy. Yeah. And then him having four of the best ones here, it was kind of like... We both talked like, hey, like let's even this contest out so there's actually a contest because if he went out and won both of the first two categories, it's, then like it's pretty best much be over. You because know it's, I mean? so it's best, there's five categories, yeah. and if you win three of those categories, game over. Yeah, so it was like, let's even this out. And he like, he's like, pick anyone you want off my team. And and I was sitting there. It was a hard pick because I wanted Beerman and I wanted Julian, and I wanted Cole. He won my whole team. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, I was like, I overall watching everyone ride, like, and Julian being on the podium last year, I'm like, I'm going with Julian. Like, I just love that dude's style. He's like crazy. He's style. super smooth. He's super sick. He goes for it when he needs to. Like, so to have him on my team to equal that out, I was pretty stoked. So for me watching, this is my first time at the event physically, uh, but obviously followed it every year. It seems like the progression of what you would call like this new era of freestyle between year one and now is pretty insane like you could see the first year it was very intimidating like these are the best riders in the world like they're handpicked to be at this this event but it seems like this year man it everyone has just stepped up so much i, I think what's good about this year is like and we talked about this before and you start talking because i'm about to sneeze i don't know what the hell you're gonna say so i'll wait for you to sneeze come on come on get it out you jackass <laughs> We can wait. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. He's back. All right, we're back. What I was going to say is a good thing about the rider selection this year is all these guys have a motocross background. Yeah. Yep. And I think with the way the sport's gone recently, it's kind of moved away from just like that traditional 75 foot, you know, just scenario. the ramp tramps. Yeah. And then, I mean, back in the day, we we're talking like this course reminds us of the early days of freestyle motocross when we had Dude Tour and we had these gnarly yeah. courses. Red Bull X Fighters, Gravity yep. Games. But they were like, expensive courses to build yeah. you know and good and they were only there for one night yeah. yeah so it just kind of like it made sense for a minute and then when when you know everything changed and live events whatever try you had to get a certain amount of people in through the door to be able to pay for that so that just didn't become realistic for our sport so then obviously it went down to just demos and then you go to like a freestyle comp just like it's just going to be standard jumps because it's a cost thing so to have a course built like this it's stayed here it's, it's now in its fourth year it's evolved so much in four years and the level of riders come out here, you couldn't invite every good freestyle rider because you're probably putting a lot of them in danger, you know? But yeah. I think there's still all, arguably a lot of people that would come here and, and crush it. But yeah. to and, and go off what you said, like 100%, some of the world's best riders here on, on his free riding and, and to be able to get over this course and to see all of them out there is awesome. But obviously, you know, Vicky's crushing it. Like where she jumps and she just whips it flat and you're like, I'm like, damn, that's a chick. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's oh, insane. It's so mate. crazy. But, you know, like, you know, Julian, um, everyone, everyone's got strengths. Everyone's ripping it. And there's been other people that aren't even in the competition. A lot of them, t some of the kids riding here are too young, but yeah. they've been crushing it. Yeah. And they're all vibing off each other. And then the course, like, they've got some of these really steep hip jumps out there on, in the in the free ride section. And, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely evolved and the level's gone up. And with the way this event's structured now the fun side of it's coming through it's it's really yeah. in a really cool spot this this year and like you said too with like the riders this year i think i think in the very beginning of this contest it's like you didn't really want too many freestyle guys here because it was more of like a free ride event yeah and if a gnarly freestyle dude came here and did a trick on every jump that's who's gonna win you know yeah, what i mean so yeah. it had to like i think it evolved over the few the, the last three years and i think where we're at now this year was pretty stacked for the freestyle to have having and, and, and I think two of the gnarliest dudes that were here this weekend were um, Julian and McNarls. Yeah. Like, I was like, these dudes are going to battle. Like, if Julian does something, McCarty's going to do it. If McCarty does it, Julian's going to do it. And, you know, with McCarty getting hurt, ended up breaking his pelvis and his femur. He already had surgery. I talked to him this morning. He's good. He's like, I'm just, I'm just bummed I'm not there. He's like, I've been looking forward to this event 
for years. Yeah, it's he's kind like, of built I, for him, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. like, I blew it. You know what I mean? But that's the thing with these contests is like when you want to win, you look at something, you're like, I got, I got to jump this because I want to have one up on these guys. And no one was looking at that jump. Like, yeah, and it's like it's not when you're riding on an alley course like this. If you get the vibe like, oh, I'm going to jump this thing, you kind of want to get it out of the way. Yeah. But on the other side of it is you could wait because you might not need it. It's like a chess game, you know, but your chess game is like literally your health and safety for the rest of your life. So it's yeah. like, it's gnarly. He was feeling it in hindsight. You know, he was trying something that had never been done yet, you know, and, he, yeah. and you know, I think he could, probably could have waited a little bit and just processed it and maybe thought about is the jump before it set up, right? Am I going to get enough power? I mean, now we know the answer to that question. See, that's that's us adult. Uh, that's us older adult uh, talking. Gentlemen. But when we were in our <laughs> yeah. prime and we our contest days, for it too. I would look at something and I'm like, I want to jump this. And then I'd like go to turn to look at something else. I'm like, I can't stop thinking about this. I need to tackle this and then I can move on to yeah. that. You know what yeah. I mean? So I get where McNarles is coming from. He wants to win. So he's like, I'm going to jump this, you know? And you know, it, it's easy to sit here and say later on when we're in our yeah. 40s, like, oh, you should have waited. But would we have waited? Fuck no, we wouldn't have waited. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're going for it. Like, we're taking that risk. And, and that's the risk we, we all take that we all know every single day when we get on our bikes. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Yeah. It's just not only that there's like the sports at the point where, I mean, it's been there for a long time. But the flip side of it, if things go wrong, it's like it could be a bigger deal. But no one's thinking like that out there. Everyone's just like they're in the moment. They're vibing. They're vibing. The course is built really well. It's safe. Like, there was everything there. Like, he gave it everything he, he like, had to get over that jump. And it was so, just, just three, four not feet enough. too yeah. short. Yeah. It was really close to pulling off. And there was a pretty good headwind off and on going when he was taking test runs. And, yeah, it's just – it is what it is. You know what I mean? It Stuff happens. It's motorcycles. And at least to everyone – at least he got his crash on camera. You know, yeah. like, it <laughs> yeah. sucks when you have a really gnarly crash and nobody gets it. <laughs> yeah. I've seen so many angles of this crash. And – I'm 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 not stoked, but like it's gonna be cool to see when he actually posts it and tell his story of like you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I asked him this morning. I'm like, hey, I'm like, I got a couple of clips. You want to see? He's like, nah. He's like, they want me to wait to post it anyway. So he's like, I don't even want to see it right now. He's like, yeah. Hit me up next week. <laughs> yeah, and the and the flip side of it is, if he makes that jump yesterday, that shit is going heavily viral. Yes. I mean, that's what it was. Nar. It was a nar. It was. I don't know how big the first jump was. It had to have been 65, maybe 70 feet into like a 157 foot gap like over the fast house tower super blind you can't see oh, the landing like yeah the jump was sick when we were looking at it i was like there's no way of like even you can't speed run it you no. know i mean it's one of those ones yeah it's all in or not so you know when you're off the lip like oh. uh-oh and yeah. the fact oh. that he was like processing to do that at that point i was like there's so many other jumps out here you could go and you know but he was right. looking for something gnarly and and, and he found it and they don't call him McNarles for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when you... like, he had pulled that, he probably would have flipped it really soon. Dude, after. he was so close <sighs> to being perfect. And literally, like, it was like a three-foot window of, like, not hitting that little knuckle. You know what I mean? And it was just a harsh landing. And when his, when his arm blew off, it was just there was nothing he could do. Yeah. So... So what's the... You're probably a great person to speak to on this. But what's that thought process when you're lining up a jump that... Th these jumps here it's not there's not a tabletop like you can't half jump, you know what I mean you can't half jump it you can't test the lip at other than just rolling it so it's like what is that thought process and that thought process and like where is your head at like if you put yourself in McNall's body yesterday yeah I think like as a rider you know you think about the lip and then the distance you know, two things you want to know and, and, and assess right you look at the lip and you're like oh yeah that lip's kind of like the one jump mm. I did here so you're like going back to like what you've experienced before and you know for the most part you know what your bike can do in second gear flat out how far it jumps third gear flat out you look at the distance like alright well I know this is a third gear jump or maybe this is a fourth gear like barely on it or third gear pinned you know so you kind of know the wheelhouse of what you need to do and then you kind of carry some speed over it and you feel like oh it's setting up i think i can carry fourth or maybe it's third or whatever it is and so that's kind of the thought process is you just you have to be calibrated pretty much at the end of the day you want to be on point with your bike knowing how far it can go you want to go and hit some bigger jumps and get the feel and i think the people who are you know like mcnall's and and uh Julian and TB, like they're free riding guys. They're going out yeah. there. They, they're not just hitting a 75 foot jump all the time. And then have this freak ability yeah. where they can go and judge these jumps. They have it from past experience. So 
it really comes down to your experience and you like and how fresh that is and how much you trust yourself that your your calibration's right. And a lot of times too, like when you see someone eyeing up a jump, it's because they in their head think they, they can, can jump, jump that jump. That jump. Yeah. And the last thing you want to do is go over and like lower their confidence and be like, I don't know, I don't think you got it, man. And then that's in their head the <laughs> yeah. whole time. It's like when I see Beerman or Axel or someone like that eyeing something up and they're asking me questions, like I'm watching them take test runs and they're like, what do you think? Like, I'll be straight up like, I think you need to go faster. I'm like, dude, if I was going to hit it, I would hit it like that, you know, but I'm not 100%. It's you're the one who has that feeling. And and being a rider and, and coming from that background and wanting to do big jumps, when you turn that corner, you know that feeling of like, oh, fuck, I got this, you know? Yeah. And 95% of the time it works out. Yeah. So it's always on you. It's not really on anyone else. Like someone can come up and tell you, yeah, you got it or no, you don't. But it's like in your head, you know if you have it or if you don't. Yeah. So it for me, it's hard for me to be like, hey, I don't think you should jump this right now. I'm like, hey, if you're confident in doing it, let's go. Like, what what do you need for me to help you? Like, because I don't want to lower someone's confidence right before they go do something gnarly, you know? Yeah. So when you oh. how how much does the uh like the actual track build come into it as well? Because the from being here and and watching the guys ride yesterday, it it seems like to my eye that baker builds jumps a certain way and that it's like okay this is a second gear jump and you need to hammer it on the lip and you're gonna make it and it's like this is a third gear jump so it seems as well like there's uh, a bit of trust that these guys put in yeah. in baker when it comes to like making these lips making these landings and they kind of can have confidence that if i'm in this gear on a 450 wide open at this time like i can make the jump i so. think from experience like because i've ridden i rode last year and then i rode this year and Baker, once you hit one of Baker's lips, you've almost hit all of his lips. He built mm. them all very similar. So it's it, safe. Yeah. Then you, it like, once you safe. know how that lip's kicking, you're like, okay, cool. All the lips look the same. They're either second gear or third gear or fourth gear, just bigger. You know what I mean? In, in distance. And that's, and that's all on you, like getting your bike to go from A to B. But once those lips are built, they're good. And, and if, if he needs to tune them in and someone's not liking something, he'll go in there and he'll fix it, fix it for you. Cause he wants you to feel as comfortable as you can. And, and that's what was crazy about that big 185 foot gap Beerman boosted yesterday is like he hit the big 140 down below on the other side of the course. And they're like, okay, it's at this degree. And then he took over to the degree finder to that other lip. And he's like, man, this thing's like four degrees steeper, mm. but it's 80, 60 feet longer. Let's, 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 let's take some angle out of it and mellow it out. So we know you're going to get the distance, not the height, you know? And I just think with, with how long Baker and Beerman have been doing this together, like they just look at each other and they know they just like yeah. three degrees, two degrees. Like they just on the same level when it comes to building jumps like that. And and I think I think that's what gives Beerman the most confidence is knowing every jump that Baker's ever built him has been really gnarly. Like the gnarly ones that he does, like the one that was out at the sandbox when he did his Red Bull video that one year Dude. over like the whole track. You know what I mean? And <laughs> and they were getting ready to go tell him, hey, maybe you shouldn't jump this. And he just comes around the corner, fourth gear wide open and barely greases it. So to have that much confidence in a builder is something that you need. And and I think with him and Red Bull working with them, the lat were with Baker and his and his his team the last few years, like they have that confidence of like, oh, okay, just take it two degrees and Beerman's like, okay, I'll just click third and hold it wide. Like that's a lot of trust. Is it the first and time it, we've seen, oh, sorry, you go finish that. You guys right? You want me to just let you guys have this conversation? <laughs> 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 just, just jump. I was you want me to join in? No, it's all right. No, have, you, have you got anything to add, Robbie? I'd like to, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, right, Twitch Jason? nailed that answer. So. <laughs> well, what I wanted to add was just the landings, you know, he, he's really good with his landings. He builds safe landings, you know, and it's like, uh, even with McNiles, like ha having that landing in the dirt where it is on the course, there's, there's so many jumps that jump to that piece of dirt. So, yeah, you know, he's, he just, yeah, he knows what he's doing. He builds safe stuff and, and, you know, obviously Jeremy mentioned it, but like all his lips are good. It's not like you gotta go, like this thing's dangerous or whatever. Like that's just not on his courses. So yeah. everything's pretty much within a similar angle. And, and then ultimately these, these uh, landings, some of them are forgiving, but like he's tuning that place the whole time. Like when Tyler did do that 180, and they changed the lip. He also changed, after he jumped it, he went and changed the, the landing. The landing, yeah. And yeah. changed, like, it all looks the same shape, but it, it's it's actually, he made it safer. So he's, he's dialed in and he's, I mean, obviously, his main goal is to make this place as gnarly, but as safe gnarly as possible. And he's yeah. doing a great job. I was going to say, it's as safe as it can be, but once the riders get out there, it's as dangerous as they want to make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they see some stuff, like, I'm going to jump from here to there you're like where they're like over the house over the like, like 600 yards that way. i was i had to ask robbie i'm like 
All right, so there's a landing. I'm like, <laughs> where are they jumping to that? I feel like this year it's so compact and there's so many options this year. Like, I don't even think we've seen half the options. Yeah. Like, I don't even, I think there's like a lot of jumps that are going to get unjumped. Yeah. There is, yeah, there is for sure. For sure. Definitely needed an extra week out here because in that one zone is there's so many landings and lips and people are starting to do transfers, but then they kind of feel like, okay, I need to go do this because this is part of the course. So yeah, they only got a certain time limit to work with stuff, and some there's a ton of jumps you could go and jump that may not line up with their, you know, they want to set out a little run. There's a lot of jumps that might be harder to get to, but are totally possible and be fun to jump, but they yep. just don't make sense because of this it's cram week. They only got a certain yeah. time. The it, wind it's pops hard. Up. Yeah, yeah. That's what I say. You got to mess with the wind. You get out there early in the morning. You have that two to three hour window to mess with. Then you have your lunch. You chill. Then go back out when the wind dies down, and you have another two to three hour window before dark. And the, a lot of the riders after the first day you sit here and you watch them walk around and they're just they're hurting like yeah. they're just everyone's doing ice bars yeah like, we're dirt bike riders out. like you feel like absolute shit when you're done riding at the end of the day and for them to go out there and do that four days in a row have a rest day and then go compete it's like it's taking a toll on their body for sure so when you go out there you kind of have a game plan of like okay i need to work on this today yeah and then i'm gonna go have marco work on me and then i'm gonna chill and then i'm gonna come back and work on that section when i come back so yeah and there's like guys like you know, they're walking around in their street clothes. I'm like, oh, aren't you riding? I'm like, oh, I can't handle it right now. My body needs a break. So then not like everyone's everyone's not possible to take every window to ride. Yeah. So, yeah, the off, the offside is that some jumps aren't going to get jumped. Which is crazy to, to think yeah. of with, you know, just like how long you guys are here, you know. <laughs> so that, that relationship between TB and, and Baker, is that a – fairly unique relationship in free riding do you think like has there ever been a combo that's worked together that well on on something like this do you think i don't think on that level but like when we were competing back in the day when it was like um dane here on building courses like you always had a good relationship with him yeah or like all the nevada boys had a good relationship with jesse olsen when he would build our courses and like you know or brian manley or matt mccall so we mm. all kind of knew like when there was each one of those builders building certain courses, we knew like, oh, okay, I need to stiffen my suspension up because this dude builds lips that are bucky. Just this dude builds lips that are yeah. a little mellow. So I think over time, like you, you, you figure that out. But I don't think anyone's worked with someone as regularly and as much as as long as Beerman and Baker yeah. and his team have been working together. Because we always say Baker, but when we say Baker, it's his whole crew of guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like every dude there serves a purpose, and they're all badasses on equipment. Yeah, no, they, they, they fully know it. So I, I think Baker's name gets thrown out a lot, but it's like the crew, not just Baker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they do a great job. Uh, so one of the other cool things I think with this event and we've kind of seen over the last couple of years especially is like, you you know, like Navas coming over from, from Spain and then he's then taking what he learns here back to Spain and then the rest of Europe and it seems like this is kind of like a rising tide floats all boats kind of scenario and it's like the level of riding that goes down here then kind of like leaks out into the rest of the world and, and it's cool too because I, I feel like Beerman told me one time that he got this idea from like the fest series you know what I mean like yeah. he would go over there and check out the fest series and he's like we need something like that for moto you know and it, it's something I think all the freestyle guys have always ever talked about about having a badass event but to get a sponsor to come in and back your event that costs this much money to build, the first time they built this place, they were out here for like two months straight, yeah. every single day. You know what I mean? Like like this course, they came out here, I think they said September 5th, and those dudes started riding September 27th, 26th, you know? So it's like, that's a lot of days, that's a lot of fuel, that's a lot of money getting spent to build something like this that gets ridden once a year yeah. for a few days, you know what I mean? So it's cool to see Beerman sponsors back him in what he wants to do because not a lot of I don't feel like a lot of companies do that these days do you want to get in on this Rob you said enough buddy all right go fuck <laughs> yourself okay can I borrow your dildo yes <laughs> clean it before you bring it back <laughs> what uh what are you most excited for come Saturday do you think like have we seen everything that we're gonna see like if you were here Thursday or do you think that there's still a lot left in the tank out here well, I think ultimately we're going to see the competition, which is going to be awesome. You know, everyone's going to really start to shine and show like all the stuff that they can do and what they're saving up. So everyone's getting ready for that. Um, it's going to be an awesome day. I mean, at the end of the day, we have the speeding style. We're seeing these guys like Hill and Evan throw down some heaters, but like when they go down and actually going to throw their time, it's going to be awesome it's to see gonna that. It's going to be gnarly. And I, then 
I'm definitely interested to see Hill ride tomorrow because Hill didn't even ride yesterday. Mm. He flew home for, right? He flew home yesterday. Yeah, 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 he flew home for his chick's birthday, so he missed a whole day of practice. And and that's a dude who's on my team who like he always shines out here. So I'm interested to see if he pulls out any more lines tomorrow. And then you know Beerman always has something up his sleeve that he just doesn't say to us. Like, yeah. So he's on something. I, I think what I'm most excited for is watching the team events of like when was, your whole team is out there. Yeah, I was gonna say that because like we have this old uh, creativity thing where us as captains like kind of offer some thoughts and opinions, but ultimately the riders are gonna know what they want to do and what their areas are. But at the end of the day, when we have this team thing, it's gonna be like a combination of our input and those their what they want to do and come together and create a little choreographed like the the expression that they've been using is synchronized swimming so we're yeah. going to try and use that out in the course which is it's going to be cool to see because there's so many options there and that's like even just running a few scenarios down it's like oh that'd be so sick if they could do that so that's going to be a highlight for sure yeah uh who's do you think is kind of like a bit of a standout performer this year that maybe you didn't expect like for me I feel like every time I watch Pat Evans ride, he gets like 50% better than the <laughs> last time I saw him. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on with this kid right now? We've seen a lot of progression from Pat in the last month, I'd say, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's like one of those guys just, you're like, oh, try a backflip. He's the guy that pulls it first time. Or yeah. you, know, you can pick up a guitar, jam a song out. He can just do any, like play your kid on the Xbox and smoke him. He's just one of those dudes. <laughs> he rode a couple of Nitro Circus shows with us a couple of weeks back in Huntington and, uh, we rode the first show, and then the then we had like five days off till the next weekend. He came out and rode and learned about two tricks a day because he was like, "Man, all I did was a whip and a knack knack. I gotta learn some shit if I'm gonna ride with you guys." And he learned a bunch of cool tricks in one week. Then the next week, he's like, "Hey, Matto, I want to flip." Matto's like, "Cruise over, like I'll teach you how to flip." First go pulls it, yeah. Then like within the day, he was flipping to the dirt, and then he went 75, like. I, yeah, I yeah. Sh I shit myself when I saw him flip it out <laughs> here. I didn't know that he had that. And no. I'm like, I'm following him on Instagram. I watch him ride all the time. <laughs> yeah, he crushed it. He's just a great talent. I think he's going to be a shiner. I think, uh, uh, I mean, we Julian, we all know that he can whip huge. Yep. And um, he's got a great, you know, obviously X-Racing background. So he's going to shine. You wouldn't know Beerman's going to shine no matter what. So it's going to be awesome to see. Cole, Cole was looking. Everyone's going to shine. Cole's coming in seven weeks. Dude off a broken ankle yeah this he is the first his, time he's ridden. first time he's touched a bike in seven weeks and when he's, i seen him limping around i see him going to marco's every day before like here he's in a cast like a, he's got a cast <laughs> yeah on like, all the time when he's riding he's casted and uh dude i watched him putting some lines together the other day where i was just like this fucking dude is bad like he's just <laughs> yeah. his Creative. mind works different you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. he's more of a bmx guy and it shows when he rides moto because like this the stuff he was doing the other day like, i was watching him do like fast plant wheel taps over the 805 box sideways where everyone else is doing it long ways and like the lines he was putting together and then like yeah he he's he's like um he's like that silent dude that can just come out and do anything and he does it really well yeah it's cool to watch like i love watching him ride yeah I think vicky will shine too because vicky's like you know she's this she's not a sleeping assassin but she's just got a great motocross style she's not scared to go big and and she likes to beat the boys and she's gonna throw <laughs> well down. dude and i don't know if you were down there, but the first day I was watching her do huge ass double grab heart attacks over the tree jump, you know? And I was like, she just learned those two weeks ago at my house. Like, and now she's already out here doing them. And I'm like, she, she's been, she's probably riding the best I've ever seen her ride. And, and, and I just got done riding shows with her up in Canada for like two weeks. And every day I'm like, dude, she's like killing it right now. And it's cool to see her take all that stuff and do it out here on a course like this. And she does it in such a i think probably the coolest thing about it is she's beaten the piss out of the boys but she's not that's not like her personality you no, know like she's you see, not here like i have to beat yeah. them she's just riding and yeah and she's fucking good at riding just the most unassuming just casual killer yeah and it's like <laughs> i don't just don't think anyone underestimates her now like she she just fully has the respect of like everybody watching everybody riding. they just know yeah. like the expectation for vicky these days is like through the roof yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, if you were someone that didn't know Moto and you came here and hung out, you wouldn't pick her as a rider. <laughs> and you go there and you see a jump, you're like, wait a minute, was that that Jack? Well, that's <laughs> what like Anna's here right now, like my wife, and she's never seen any of this stuff. And then she's like, oh, that's cool that they like, you know, there's a chick riding. Like, is she good? Like, how? And I'm like, she's better than girl. Yeah, she could win some categories. Ninety nine point nine percent of every man on earth that rides. She'd probably bike. smoke everyone here on a motocross track besides Beerman. <laughs> <laughs> She's fucking fast too, dude. Insane. Yeah. So we kind of glossed over Barrowman's hit yesterday. Yeah. And it's like, 
at, at the he once he was on the top of the ramp I, I said to him I was like dude you do it every fucking time <laughs> it's true like every time you go somewhere every time I've been anywhere with him he will find something so much gnarlier than everyone else and it's like he just has some kind of like magical feeling with the bike to just know what to do off every jump it seems like yeah he's tuned in he's well calibrated and he's yeah. like he, he believes in himself and he knows he can do like he'll go for stuff and i'm like i'm good i'm not even gonna try that you know <laughs> yeah. so yeah but us back in the day we're like fuck that he did it i'm doing it but yeah he's mean? in his prime and he's crushing it. it's great to see i mean just sitting back watching i'm like i'm glad it's not my old ass out there anymore like yeah seeing him do it is like hell yeah he's like carrying that torch like a champion and just like seeing him like do that stuff like yesterday when we're looking at the jump he didn't do that many runs at it he only took two, like or, two three, or three yeah. runs and then he just hucked it i was like damn like and he was like if you hear me rev that's i'm going you know like to pump up the crowd and and like you said with with him being tuned in it's like it's so different to see i don't i don't think i don't think any one of us were ever that tuned in on our craft when we were doing it like how the the confidence he has when he's talking about a jump he's like oh yeah i'll just take the degree out i'm gonna click third gear wide coming out of the tunnel and I'm going to land right at the perfect spot. And he's so confident mm. in that where you're like, yeah, I believe you. Let's see you do it. And he just does it every single time. And it's crazy to, it's crazy to watch, watch his mind work because a lot of people are like, oh, that dude's so stupid because he's always just like, he looks fried. But I'm like, dude's actually way smarter than you fucking think. Oh, and yesterday, so I got here right after McNiles had his crash. <laughs> and then obviously that's a heavy situation. Like there's a fucking helicopter landing. And yep. it's like, that's everybody's friend. Like, that's a gnarly deal to, to go through, you know? And it's like, that could rattle people so hard. And he just came back. Like, I rolled back to the to the barn here with him. He's like, I'm going to do an ice bath, and then we'll get in the car. We'll go straight there. He said, I'm, and I'm just going to hit the, the 180 straight up. <laughs> and it's just like, I'm like, yeah, so, like, you know you, how your friend just got flown out of here on a jump that was 40 <laughs> feet shorter than that one? Like, <laughs> yeah. is that, like, maybe a sign? But it just didn't, like... Again, he was calibrated. He's like, I think McNiles did this, this, and this. Yep. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And, like, that internal confidence. And, again, like, he... I was standing by the lip, and he did those two or three runs. And then, as he was on the lip of the last speed run, he, he yelled out to Wes, and he was like, I'm going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just so casual and so... Cal and there's just... He, it seems like he gets to a point where there's just not doubt in his mind in, yeah. a, in a way to, that other people might have. You have to get there because if you're going to have doubt, then you don't really deserve the, the, the floor at that point, you know, because, like, I mean, but back when I was doing freestyle jumps, like, the biggest jump I did was a 340-foot gap, you know, and I know it, I knew it was, like, fifth gear on it and it was fifth gear wide open. And, like, I did it the one day and then the next day come back and you got to hit that thing again. Wind's changed, everything's changed. It's life and death. Temperature, But everything. when you're confident... You, you don't like stop and assess the things everyone else is assessing and I think you know when you go to um, like when he's doing these different jumps you know he's just like yesterday was an early day not only did um, did uh, McNiles die but there was a car accident on the way back from the track and a lot of people were the first people there and saw a lot of so there was a lot of stuff if you had a weak mind that could yeah. make you think oh it's a cursed day or whatever but like everyone here is like they're headstrong they're tuned athletes Tyler's the most tuned in I've ever seen him right now so it's just cool to see him have such clarity such confidence just be in his zone tuned in and yeah it's like all these he, there's a million excuses or reasons why he could have like read between some BS and been like oh no today's not a good day or whatever yeah. like he just none of that was so that's when an athlete's firing so he's just like sharpened and it's good to watch you know and yeah. it's, like he proved it yesterday like he, he pulled that jump and you know case that rode out of it like that was a that was a landing that if you weren't attuned yeah. to him, like that could have messed you up and uh he regretted that now they've made some changes to it so if he goes to do it again it's going to even be safer so yeah it's cool to know that you know i think as far as the pressure goes the first one's always the gnarly one he's got that out of the way so i think the pressure's off a little bit it's like time to go have a good day but i think we're in for a quite a show tomorrow it's going to be badass i i think the best show is going to be more of like the demo on the other side because mm. like when we were sitting there watching those guys ride last night oh, there's was so, so many sick. fucking dope jumps like insane where i'm like dude that looks so sick yeah and i think that's the kind of place too where like everyone can shine too yeah like it sort of doesn't suit any one dude no. more than another one over there it's like a playground, playground for dirt bikes over there 
Yeah, it flows really good. It's got a lot of elevation. That, yep. that shark fin that like uh, goes down oh, off yeah. the top. Yeah, it's like it's just a fun looking jump. You know, yeah. it's not like it's that tech, but it just looks it's like it's not big. Like, like I want to hit that thing. You know, yeah. and then, but then even I wouldn't mind staying down the bottom of the hill because that big hip jump that they're doing over the top of the hill they're going so high and we're, we're all standing from on top of the hill it looks gnarly from there but I, I bet from down the bottom it looks gigantic that lip looks like it's like 30 feet tall yeah it's oh we went up it in like the the side by side just to get as far as the side by side yeah. and go and before it would start flipping over yeah, yeah it's like a wall yeah and it's ba- it just looks like a vertical wall jump yeah that is what how 30 40 feet tall i don't know how tall it is but when i look up at it i'm like this yeah it's not happening it hurts your neck you know what I mean <laughs> yeah it's a big dog alright boys well you're both big dogs and uh, captains of uh, of our teams here this weekend at Red Bull Imagination 4.0 thanks for having a chat boys as always Rad. thanks Gypsy good to stop in good to see you again mate yeah it's and, good to finally get on here I've been getting I've been getting um, spammed in my I don't know if hammered. you said something one day like hey go tell Twitch to hurt me get on here but my DMs for like a month was just like get on Gypsy Tail you better get on Gypsy Tail quit being a pussy get on Gypsy like I was like he must have said something I can't remember if I did but I, I, I want it I, it'd actually be sick too to do one with you boys both three hours there's a lot of stories yeah oh, a lot of good well, I travel with this dude so much there's like so much shit that we don't want to talk about but now that we're older we will yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah Good times, boys. Cheers. All right, we'll uh, we'll bring in our next victims. Cool. Thanks, Thanks. boys. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.